when learning in Chapter 2 about the CPU, we kept mentioning memory. You've learned about registers, cache, and in Chapter 1 we mentioned RAM briefly. In this chapter, we'll be looking at RAM, ROM, and virtual memory. In computer science, you might hear the term volatile used. Now, volatile basically means something that can change quickly in a bad way. So, you might have heard the words used in chemistry, or maybe to describe a wild animal. In computer science, we describe memory as either volatile or non-volatile. Volatile memory means it can be lost instantly if the power is cut. So if you turn off the computer when someone's using it, the memory will be wiped. Non-volatile memory means it's permanent even without power. During the CPU chapter, every time we refer to memory, we were referring to random access memory. This is used as the main memory in a computer system. It's where all the instructions processed by the CPU are coming from. RAM would be volatile memory. This means if your computer powers off suddenly, whatever it was doing at the time is lost and forgotten. The main thing people get confused about is the difference between RAM and secondary storage memory. RAM is where data, files and programs are stored when they're being used. Secondary storage is where the programs are saved when you are not using them. This is why you lose your work when someone powers off your computer, but if you've saved it on secondary storage you can load it back up again. RAM is much faster than secondary storage, which is why it is used to run current instructions. Read-only memory, or ROM, would be described as non-volatile, as you can't write to it. ROM is stored on a microchip on the motherboard. If you remember, that's the big circuit board which connects all of the components together in a computer. ROM contains all the instructions for the computer to start up correctly. Another term for this would be the boot sequence. These instructions are called the BIOS. The BIOS chip is basic input-output system. Earlier we learned about an embedded computer system like those found in a washing machine. You wouldn't need to edit or run any new programs on that system, so the system would be stored on a BIOS chip. In a modern computer system, the boot up sequence starts when you press the power on button. The CPU reads the instructions and checks the system for devices, memory and an operating system which you'll learn about later. The BIOS chip is essential for the computer to start up correctly. Have you ever been using a computer and it crashes, freezes or goes really slow? All the time, right? Well, this is usually because you've run out of RAM. To stop the computer becoming unrecoverable and completely dying, we use something called virtual memory. This is where part of the secondary storage is used as extra RAM. It only gets used if you run in too many programs or something that uses a lot of RAM, like Adobe Photoshop for larger images. Data has to move to RAM from secondary storage, so this slows down the system. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe. Bye.